Hello everyone and welcome to Friday Live. My name is Ashley Hay. I'm an artist and also the importer of Powertex for Australia. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for being here and watching. And of course, if you are here, please pop a comment in and say where you're from. I love to see who's watching from where. And I hope today that this live will really inspire you over the weekend to get creative. So some of the materials I'll be using in today's demonstration, of course, include Easy 3D Flex. I'm going to use Powertex Universal Medium in blue, and I'm going to use some sand and balls just for some fun texture. So, of course, today I'm going to do a little bit of an introduction to Easy 3D Flex, what it is and how it's different to stone art, and then also show you a few of the different ways that you can actually use Easy 3D Flex in your artwork for creating incredible um, textural effects. So next week, I'll then be continuing the theme about the um, stone, the, the easy 3D flex clay, which is air dried and absolutely beautiful to work with. So you're in for a treat. Let me know where you're from. Uh, let me know you're here. And I look forward to sharing this with you. So without any further ado, we're going to get started. We'll go down to the art table and have a look. And um, I'll share... Uh, that with you. So there's the art table right there. And um, so you can see what I've got on my table. This was actually a, um, this is actually a piece that I started at the beginning of the year when I demonstrated how to do stone art marbling effects. So I thought this would be a fun one to actually play on top of. I should probably have sealed my stone art. It is absolutely beautiful and I don't really want it to um, get bister and things on it, but we'll see what happens and it will be what it will be. But you can see the beautiful effect of with marbling with stone art clay. So if you did miss that live, you will find it on the Friday Live playlist on YouTube. So you can actually look up stone art and see some exciting things from January this year. Okay, so of course I've got my Powertex uh, Universal Medium. And as I say, I've actually got some 3D sand and balls. Now these are absolutely awesome for just adding a few little bits of extra texture to your artwork. So you can see there's large ones, there's medium, small ones, and there's also a sand, which is actually really lovely to work with. Um, so highly recommend, this, this is actually the sample pack that you get where you actually get one of each size. So that's a great starter um, way to start with the 3D sand and balls because you get to test everything. So that's the starter pack in that. And of course, we will also be using Easy 3D Flex as well. So if you want to play along, um, you will need some Easy 3D Flex, some Powertex Universal Medium. It doesn't matter what colour you use. You can use anything you like. And um, then you might um, want some fun things like the 3D sand and balls. So let's get started. So as well as all of the materials, I also need a few things to scrape with, to apply with, a damp cloth or somewhere to wash up and some fun extra bits and pieces to use. <laughs> Excuse me. So we'll put out a little bit of Powertex. And of course, before I do begin, you do want to make sure that you give it a good stir and then give it a, a bit of a shake as well. I am absolutely hopeless at cleaning the top of my bottles, as you can see, I've got bits cut 
coming up everywhere. Um, now, what you do need to know with the Easy 3D Flex is that you actually use less Powtex and more of the powder. So this is one of the differences between the uh, stoner and the Easy 3D Flex. When you mix up the stoner clay, it's approximately 50-50 of each. Whereas if I make the clay up with Easy 3D Flex, it works out to about 30% Powtex and about 70% powder. So the 3D Flex, if you love it, it actually comes in a bigger container in a four kilo tub, which is actually awesome. So um, I'll just put out a bit more because I'm sure I can use it up on something um, if I mix it up. And then we, you can see with the um, Easy 3D Flex that it is a lot finer powder than the stone art clay is. And so when um, it's more like a silicon base, I guess, because the clay goes um, a bit stretchy and it's really lovely to play with. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how to make a runny mix. And what the runny mix is, it is sent you add a bit of the Easy 3D Flex powder to the universal medium. And you don't want to... Oh, <laughs> You don't want too much. So if anything, that's probably too much. Um, but just basically like as if you were sprinkling a coat of icing sugar on a cake um, would be your runny mix. So you can see that that now is a lot thicker than it was before. And the great thing with this medium is that because you are mixing it up, you have control over how you use it. So you can add more powder, less powder, depending on the thickness that you actually want to apply. And then you can play with that particular thickness. So you can see this is still runny. Uh, so that will work just a treat. And so what I thought I'd do is hold things so I do, I do like to play, um, as those of you who know me know. So I'll just get my palette knife. Now, the reason I like to have a few different tools, this one I tend to mix with. This one I tend to actually um, take it off of there and apply with. So this is a great one to use in conjunction with that. And, of course, my palette knife is also a bit of fun. So I'm just going to do a bit of drawn effects with the runny mix. And so you can play around to your heart's content and you can spread it sort of thinly like so. Um, and I can put as much or as little as I like on that. I don't want to really get it on my stone up. Lovely. So I can actually score back into this. So if I wanted to, I could actually put down a layer of easy 3D flex runny mix and then I could actually draw back into it if I wanted to do that. So a really good tool for doing that, and I might show you another day, is actually um, the pastel tools that you get, which are silicon rubber on the end, and they're brilliant for drawing back into uh, your mixed media work. So I can just play with that a little bit. And, of course, I would just um, play to my heart's content, thinking about composition. Uh, not too much thought usually goes into my Friday Live. It's usually pretty random, um, whereas when you're working in the studio, you can think a lot more.
clearly so you can look at your artwork and then you can make a decision around where you're going to go with it. So I tend to tend to be more focused on talking to you guys and um, just sharing with you. So sometimes, you know, um, you'll, I'll go, oh, no, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> so I'm just following some of what's here. But, of course, if I was working in the studio, I would be really considering, you know, what is my focal point going to be um, and, you know, how am I playing with the textures and what do I want to achieve? But with this, I'm just going to be really playful and I'm just going to pop, you know, some of that runny mix down. Now, the other thing that I can do, which I will show you right now, uh, well, not right now, but in, in a second. Um, so I can get uh, as thick or, you know, keep it as thin as I like. This corner, why not? I love it when you get these little scrapes of uh, paint across some of the textures. And there's a lot of serendipity involved. So, you know, give yourself permission to play and discover things. I think that's really important. I think, you know, we get a little, we tighten up a little bit too quickly with everything. And so I think it's really important to, you know, be able to go, okay, well, you know, let's just see what happens and go with the flow. So I'm pretty happy with how that is actually looking. And like I say, this is just a layer. So I could, you know, like I can do a whole lot more to this piece. I do feel like I want to darken this corner down as well. So we'll just do that while we're there. And we can always lighten it up again if we want later on. And I'll go off this edge here. So when you are working compositionally, you don't want to feel like it's contained within the space, so like you're working within a frame. Um, you want to let the spaces flow off the edge. That's really, really important. And you also want to have some sort of uh, focal point in your piece. Now, while that is dry, I can get one of these fun tools and I can actually, uh, you know, create some texture in that. So I do like the fact that um, it's sort of flattened off but I'll give you an idea of what I mean. So see how that is just scraping some of that away? And I can actually also just make like little dotty marks like that, which are a bit of fun too. And I can do a little bit over here if I want to. So these tools are fabulous. They're just from the hardware store. So you'll find those at any hardware store near you. They're actually used by tilers for spreading the glue and they come in all sorts of sizes. So this is another one. I've got a very big one as well and then I've got sort of a pointy one. So they are a lot of fun. The other thing that is actually really fun is a comb. You could use anything textured to actually work into this runny mix layer. And as you can see, you can also kind of draw with it and make marks. And it's all about the mark making. And you can see how I've also got the dark and light happening in the piece. So you've got contrast, you've got mark making. And uh, let's say you go, oh, I liked it better when it did, wasn't so textured here you can just take another layer back over the top of that. And I'm actually really liking how that is picking up on the top of some of this texture. So now I've got a flat area and then I've got some really interesting things happening. Um, I'll just hold it up. I've got some really interesting things happening in that surface. 
And you don't want to get precious too quickly, you know, about what you create. You want to allow yourself to layer an experiment and, um, you know, play with, with your colours and things. So that is your runny mix. So if you love that, um, which I'm sure you will, then you can simply add a little bit more powder to it. I am going to, I got very carried away with that first layer of runny mix. I wasn't intending doing so much, but I just want to add a little bit more powder text so I've got more to play with because what we're going to do now is we're going to make a thicker mix and it is going to be like a stringy mix. So this is where it becomes really interesting because you've got the universal medium and then you've got your easy 3D flex. But it is so versatile because you control how much of the powder you put into the universal medium. So the more you put powder you put in, the thicker it becomes and the more clay-like it actually becomes. So it is actually really, really terrific. So we're going to add more 3D flex to the mix. Going to just move this over here a little bit so I've got a bit more room to show you. And then we're going to actually mix this up. You'll be surprised how much powder you actually need to make it thick. It looks like it's a lot, but then when you mix it, it actually, you know, disappears. Now, this is where that other tool is really handy because if you're just making a little bit like I am at the moment, this other tool just gets into the sides really well and see how it's just pulling that um, away from those edges and I can get in and mix that. The other thing I can do is I can actually use one with the other and keep my area a little bit tidier as I'm working by um, using both the tools to sort of clean each other off. So you can see that's still quite runny. So I would like more 3D flex in there because I want it to be a lot stiffer mix. Oh, yeah, this is looking nice. Look at that. So we want to use all the product. I really like getting value out of my materials. So I really like to use everything up. So I just like to see it all stirred in. Now, you can see how lovely this is. Look at that it is just really stringy and lovely now I'm just going to scrape these edges so that I get all of that powder going into the mix and I will keep the mix in the middle so I use every little bit of it up so with the stoner you can actually store the stoner and use it later with the easy 3D flex, it doesn't store very well. So once you mix up uh, what you want to work with, you really want to use it all. So what I recommend, uh, which I actually like to do, is I recommend that you maybe have a couple of pieces on the go that you actually use all your spare materials on. And you start them off just with your leftover materials and then you can kind of go, okay, what do I want to do now? Let's take a look at that. So you can see it's kind of a stringy mix. It's holding its form a lot more. So it is really yummy to work with. So what I like to do is I like to dispatch it off the tool. So instead of trying to dispatch it out of the container, I control what I'm doing a bit more by having two tools. 
So this one I'm using to sort of dispatch and this one I'm using to put it down. So now we just need to work out where we're going to put some thicker texture and really, you know, my focal point is this lovely <coughs> marble texture. So I might, and I'm liking what's happening in here with this. I'm quite liking this negative space here. So I'm just going to go for it and just see what happens and see what I do. So I'm just going to use my intuition and sort of just uh, go with flow. This is where I go quiet because when I go creative brain, um, my brain likes to not talk at the same time. All right, so then we could actually get some of this and we can stretch it like that. So we can get some of this and stretch it. And it is absolutely beautiful to use like that. So I liked my first drape and drop better um, than the second one. So we'll just put a little bit more texture in there. We'll get some more 3D flags. Okay, so you can see I haven't got a lot on that side of the tool. It's all on the top of the tool so that I can basically take that and I can run it off of that first piece and really drape and drop it. Okay, so I've got a little bit on here that I don't really want, so I can just take it off. Um, if it's made a mark, I can actually clean it up if I want. So this little spitty bit there, I don't particularly like. We'll just clean up that bit. And this little lump here, I'm not a big fan, so I'm just going to spread that a little bit more. I don't mind this bit where it's going onto the stone art clay. So I'm just going to leave that. This bit here, I don't like the way it loops back, but it's okay. So I'm not going to stress over that too much. What I am going to do is I'm going to put a bit more in here. So what I'm looking for is I'm looking for a variety of marks. So I don't want everything to be the same. And I definitely don't want it to have even spacing. The other thing is that your eye is going to close up lines. So your brain actually likes it when it has to work a little bit harder than just um, looking at something. It likes to look at interesting areas of interest. And how the brain is excited is by breaks in your lines, breaks in your mark making and everything, like I say, not being exactly the same. Okay. I'm just going to clean up this tool now, scrape it off there. And see how I've sorted out that area that I didn't like where it was sort of doubling back on itself. And I can actually flatten down some of these areas as well if I want. Fun, fun, fun. Love mark making. Who doesn't love a bit of texture? Okay, 
So like I say, when you're making decisions in your studio, you can be a lot more thoughtful and a lot more intuitive in the process because you will be totally absorbed in the piece. Now, you're going to see how I use absolutely every little bit of material. So you can see how I'm getting right in there. And look at how I've got that on my palette knife. Look how much material was actually left in there. So there was quite a lot. I'm just going to make this bit here a bit better. And then I'm going to pop a little bit in here. Yum. I love it when it goes all stringy. And you want to allow things to flow off the edge. Okay, let's get in. Let's get all our materials. So here we go. So I'd say I'm pretty close to having used everything up, wouldn't you? <laughs> um, so you can see I do like to use absolutely everything. And I'm just going to add... A little bit more in there. And I can always come back and do another layer. So, of course, this wouldn't necessarily be my last layer of play. Definitely would not be. So I'm just creating a bit of dimension in there. Now, let me hold that up for you so you can see how that's looking. Huh. It's a little bit hard. I don't think you can see the dimension, but, yes, if I hold it that way, you can see that it's actually got uh, dimension in the actual structure. So remembering that this is a stringy mix, so it's looking pretty busy now, but that's okay because what you would do is just quieten it down, quieten it down in your... Next layers. Now, what I want to show you next, just put this over here. Um, what I want to show you next is my balls, my sand balls. So this is the large size. So I'm going to pop a few in here. Again, you don't want everything to be in the same place and you don't want to overuse stuff so I usually like less is more <laughs> and then more is more so more fun more play okay I'm just going to tap those in make sure they're really well I'm going to stay where I want them to stay so I could add some more large balls in there for sure so we'll just quickly do that I might put a series of three here so what's now happening is my eye is following this linear area here so I'm going to keep the interest happening and the eye to keep moving fluidly. So I think that's enough um, big ones. Then what is really nice is to go from the big ones to your medium ones and that you'll find that the balls sort of fall between the sizes. Uh, 
Um, so I prefer to just leave my big ones on this. And then these ones are really nice. These are like seed beads. So I could even put them into some of this runny mix, which is actually really a nice way to use these. I do like the fact that the runny mix actually um, goes very shiny and it is actually gives goes a lot darker than the 3D flex. So you actually get different tones between the runny mix and the 3D flex um, because I'm going to put some of that in there. So I'm not loving it in here. I actually liked that, how it was. But I can always put um, more uh, Powtex over the top of it if I want to tone it back. But I'm also going to be playing and spraying other colours and working back into the piece as well. So I can make a decision on where I go with these little balls. Um, they're a lot of fun and so you will love these. Really good fun to play with. And they just add a really nice um, texture to your piece. Okay, so I've done that. Now you can see that there's quite a lot of blue spits. So what I can do is just tap the bottom of my artwork. So this is actually a board. And in tapping the bottom, what's happening is all of those loose balls are rolling around and they're then attaching to any of the white, any of the wet power text that is actually there. And that is actually sealing those balls in nicely and just really att attaching them on so that then I can play. So that is the runny mix and the stringy mix, which is what I wanted to show you this week. So I hope you have fun playing with that. The sand is really lovely. That's one for another day. And um, play, play, play. So you can see the possibilities are endless with this because you have 11 different colours in the Powertex. You can use any of the colours with the Easy 3D Flex and create textural layers to your heart's content in different colours if you wish. So next week, like I say, I'm going to show you how you can crack the um, Easy 3D Flex and the beautiful effects that you can get with um, extreme texture in your artwork with the 3D Flex. So you can see I've got some uh, little balls going on to this area over here, which I don't mind. You're not going to see it in the end. Um, now, what I can do is I can then spray this with everything we've been playing with with colour. So I can spray it or I can paint back into it. So I'm going to, just for fun, have a little bit of a play with um, what I've got here. I really should have pulled out some of these colours. But let's pull out some blue. So, of course, this is the liquid power and we'll have a little bit of green. Okay. 
So that's the liquid power. And of course, I could just play with that. I must have got my sticky fingers on here. Now, sometimes um, you will find that there's a little bit of a wax resist. Usually it might be the oil out of your fingers. So I actually had one of the new trainers the other day. They said, oh, you know, um, my sculpture is actually resisting the um, Powtex. And um, that can happen sometimes if you sort of have like a, a waxy um, bit on your fingers. So just be aware of that. So, of course, I can spray water onto that like we've been doing over the last few weeks as well. Remembering that this, um, let's see where it goes. I'm just going to let it go naturally. So if you haven't seen those episodes on colour, be sure to watch those because you can see how now my next layer I could start playing with vistas and with um, the uh, liquid powers So and also the wax as well. So if I wanted to keep this marbled colour, I'm better to seal it with something like Easy Coat Glossy where it's actually going to seal the surface and I'll be able to clean it back to the original colour. So this liquid power is actually going to stain that. Um, but what I could do is following the live today, I could actually seal all of this with um, Easy Coat Glossy or easy varnish and then let it dry and then in my next layer when I do my next layer if I want to wipe it back I can actually wipe it back if I want it to absorb then I wouldn't do that um, I would just leave it and just see what happens so you can see some of these tones that are actually happening on top of that marbled stone art clay are actually really nice now, if it all gets too busy, of course, that's where you need to then bring your light back into your piece. So what I want to do here is I do want to create a little bit of a contrast between the blue and um, the, actual, the actual piece. But I might leave it until I've actually done uh, this. So I'm just going to take a bit more this green in here and in here and I might take a bit more up here and then take some blue in here. So in my next layer I could take oranges and um, you know more contrasting colours to the actual uh, blue and green. Alrighty, so I'm just going to leave it at that uh, and let that be a layer that will dry and then we can take a look at that next week and see how it is actually looking. So I'll hold up the yumminess of this. Awesome, so much fun, so great to play with. I hope you have enjoyed that. So a um, little bit of fun, a little bit of textural play to wet the creative juices for the weekend. Go away and have a play with runny mix in layers with whatever colours of Powtex that you have in the universal medium. And the fantastic thing is that it is just so versatile, 
in terms of what you can do. I'm just going to put that back on the screen again so you can see it in full screen. And I'll just move it slowly up there so you can see how that is looking. So let me know what you think in your comments. Uh, I love it. I've had fun. I hope you've had fun watching. If you have any questions, be sure to drop them in the comments. And, of course, if you are watching in replay, please let me know and I will answer any questions that you have. And, of course, I do love seeing who has watched, even in replay, because I know many of you watch. And uh, when I do the live, it's in the middle of the night there. So um, it's wonderful. I really appreciate you being here and watching. And I'm just going to share this with you. So this is actually... Uh, a mixed media, a section of a mixed media triptych that I've done, and then I've taken the Power Wax finish on. So if you missed the Power Wax series of videos of lives that I did, that's definitely worth watching because it will show you how after you have created some really lovely layers, how you can actually take the wax back on and lighten those areas up. The other thing that I like to do is I like to actually finish with a little bit of resin. Um, now, I don't always resin my work, um, but it is really super to actually have some areas where you, um, where you have the shininess uh, contrasting with the mat of the um of your piece so i love resin to finish off the vista and the crackles and it just pops your color so it is actually really nice to use i'm just um moving some of this oh it's so lovely so i'm just moving moving it around a little bit because it had puddled <laughs> as you do in the middle of doing a live. So thank you for watching, everyone. I hope you've had fun. I hope you're inspired to create. Don't forget, please share with us in the Creative Hub what you create from the live. I love to see what everyone does, how they apply it in their own artwork because, of course, what I've done today is a pretty random abstract sample of textures and I will just keep building on that until I'm happy with how it actually looks. So I'll just put up a couple of links for you. So if you haven't already um, joined the PowerTex Australia Creative Hub, be sure to join us there. It is a fantastic group. If you're stuck with anything, you can post questions, ask questions, and there's lots of trainers in there who can help you uh, and lots of experienced people working with PowerTex as well that can actually help you with the questions. And it's just such a lovely community, very, very encouraging, and it's also nice to share your finished artwork there and we all get to see it. So um, please join us there. And, um, of course... You can actually watch, uh, go onto the PowerTex Australia channel on YouTube. There is heaps of content there. So you'll find the What Is playlist there. There is a What Is video on What Is Easy 3D Flex. So if you want to learn more about Easy 3D Flex, then be sure to go there and have a watch of that. While you're there, like and subscribe to the channel and you'll get notifications when I go live so that you remember to hop on to Friday Live. So, um, of course, if you uh, want to learn more from me, you can also go to Ashley Hay Art Academy where you'll find a series of online courses. One of the courses is actually the mixed media triptych that I've showed you today um, in the little snippets that I showed. Go there, have a look at what it includes. It's a really great course. So that might be one that you might like to do. Uh, and of course, to learn more about Powertex in Australia, you can just go to powertex.com 
www.ngoes.org.au and you can find out lots more on the website and, of course, order online if you would like to. There's also loads of trainers around Australia and around the world who would love to see you in their studio for a workshop. So join us in the fun of PowerTex. I hope you've been inspired. Hope you have a wonderful creative week and I will see you next week. And um, what we will be doing next week, of course, is Crackle with Easy 3D Flex. So stay tuned for that one and be sure to join me again next week. And thank you so much for joining me this week. Ciao for now, everyone. Bye. Mm.